Hey everyone, this is Amanda from DevotionInAction.com. We've got these A Little Town of Bethlehem uh, principles for Advent Carol series, week two. And I'm working in this large uh, day spring Bible. And in Micah here, it's written almost poetically, which means there's a ton of white space um, on these pages. And so I'm going to use the largest printable, turn sideways on this page. And I can use that whole like cityscape in that large space there. And just tapping that washi tape on my fingers to get a little bit of the stickiness off and securing the page so that it doesn't shift around on me as I trace. I'm in Micah chapter 5 verse 2. This is the one that goes, But you, Bethlehem Ephratha, I don't know how you say that word. <laughs> Though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. So as I'm tracing this in pencil and lining in um, a pen that does not react to water, I want to talk to you a little bit about Advent. Advent is about waiting. I don't normally like waiting, but my husband and I have been talking about a phenomenon for a few years now. We've been reflecting on how Christmas Day often seems like a letdown. The fun of Christmas is in the anticipation. We watch Christmas movies, decorate our houses, see other houses bedecked with lights, and spend more time with family and friends. We have special parties and events all leading up to Christmas Day, and then wham, it's all over. The waiting or the anticipation is the best part of the season. That seems backwards from how most of life is. It's the opposite of how the centuries leading up to the first Christmas were. The Israelites we're waiting for the fulfillment of the promise of the Messiah, waiting for deliverance, waiting for joy, waiting for freedom, waiting for significance in a world that viewed them as worthless. And within the Israelites, Bethlehem was looked down on and viewed as worthless. Remember our verse? But you, Bethlehem, Ephratha, we'll make it up, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel. The small and insignificant was given the greatest purpose and importance in the world on that first Christmas and is now famous forever because of that one event. So our Christmas carol for this week is O Little Town of Bethlehem. And um, the first verse of this goes, O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the silent stars go by. Yet in thy dark street shineth the everlasting light. The hopes and fears of all the years are met in thee tonight. You see, the world was moving along like Bethlehem was nothing special. Like this family in the line of Judah was completely insignificant. And yet, while the world ignored and devalued it, this place was host to the fulfillment of the hopes of a nation for generations. The next verse says, For Christ is born of Mary and gathered all above, while mortals sleep, the angels keep their watch of wondering love. O morning stars together, proclaim the holy birth, and praises sing to God the King, and peace to all the earth. Mary, this young girl, insignificant to the world around her, was chosen as the vessel for the Son of God. Are we seeing a theme repeating itself here? While well, everyone ignored and shoved her away in the place where the angels were, where the animals were kept, the angels were watching everything she did. The very stars were crying out praises to God because of the work of God in her life and how she allowed Him to use her. Now, this pattern is not exclusive to that first Christmas. Today, those of us who feel insignificant can be given purpose and importance as children of the King of Kings. If we will believe on the Lord Jesus and receive him in to be Lord of our lives, we get the ultimate Christmas gift. The song goes on to sing, how silently, how silently the wondrous gift is given. 
So God imparts to human hearts the blessings of his heaven. No ear may hear his coming, but in this world of sin, where meek souls will receive him still, the dear Christ enters in. It's the plan of salvation, how God has given this gift of Jesus. And if we will accept him in, we get this freedom from the world of sin. And the song ends with this, O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to us, we pray. It's actually a prayer back to Jesus. Cast out our sin and enter in, be born in us today. We hear the Christmas angels, the great glad tidings tell. O come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. This last verse of O Little Town of Bethlehem is a prayer of salvation and deliverance, a prayer of belief. Come to us, abide with us, our Lord Emmanuel. Emmanuel, God with us. That is the promise of Christmas. Our insignificance transformed by the presence of the Almighty God in our lives. So as I start to watercolor here, I'm going to put kind of a blue sky around this town. And then um, I'm going to choose some oranges, some brown, some golds, and some gray. And I would say choose three to four colors that you're going to use and repeat those colors throughout this cityscape for the town of Bethlehem. Um, because if you choose too many colors, it starts looking a little bit like a circus. And I didn't like how blue that sky was around this town, so I'm adding a little bit of kind of a grayish purple um, close in around the town, kind of darken that up a little bit so that it's it's not quite so bright blue coming out from there. I know it doesn't show up on camera super well, but on the page I wanted it to be a little darker um, uh, than the bright blue that I had that I laid down there at the beginning. Kind of drag those colors toward edges uh, that might be farther away from you so that you can um, see some dimension in uh, your picture as you watercolor. And I would say, like I said, repeat those colors. So I'm coming along and I'm finding places to put the same color in different places in the cityscape. And then uh, that will kind of make your design cohesive as you, as you watercolor, as you paint this image. So our action step for this week uh, some of us have been living like we are still insignificant, like we have no purpose or importance. And yet, we have the Savior of the world living in us and with us, Emmanuel. We need to lift our heads and embrace the gift given us by the Father. We are no longer waiting and hoping for the fulfillment of the promise. Just like it was the first Christmas, our mission actually begins on Christmas Day. It's not whammo and it's over. It's the start. It's not the end. It's the beginning. Birth and not death. Life. And that life full of significance and mission to tell the world of God who abides with us. So I want to pray for you as we uh, continue to paint in this picture. Dear God, help us to see ourselves the way that you do. Enable us to embrace the gift of significance that you have given each and every one of us when you sent your son to abide with us. Help us not to live in perpetual waiting, but to actually walk in your mission for our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And again, on these stones, on these rocks that form these walls, I am um, kind of using all those colors, sometimes in darker darker versions of them uh, to make them really pop, but kind of alternating and pulling in all of those different colors. So you have um, a lot of variety in those, uh, the stonework that builds the walls. So as you're painting this, um, you, you could really choose any color scheme that you wanted. Um, I did have an idea, like it would be really cool to do a night sky. Um, leave some white or come back in with a white gel pen or even silver um, watercolors. 
um, like that metallic set that I have that I've used in other videos and uh, create stars in a really kind of dark sky. Maybe even the lettering for A Little Town of Bethlehem come back in with white gel pen and do that over the top of like deep blues and purples and grays to create like this nighttime sky would be really cool behind um, A Little Town of Bethlehem. I, I'm recording well, uh, vo recording this voiceover after I'd already done this and I did like it was dark on the insides of these doorways uh, it got darker in there I saw some people had already uh, painted this and uh, they did kind of glowing lights coming from the inside which is also a fantastic idea like it's lit up with light and that would be um, really cool I think especially um, if you've got a kind of a night sky. You could even have a glow coming off of the town into a night sky further up on the page. Um, there's just lots of things that you could do with this. Um, you could go with gray tones, uh, grays and purplish kind of colors on the buildings, blues, grays, purples, and, and a more cool color palette uh, rather than a warm color palette. Um, so there you have a lot of options. Um, as I'm trying to get like a really dark kind of shadowy uh, entrance here. It, it is a little bit more difficult with watercolor because it tends to turn gray instead of black. So you've got to get a lot of paint and not a lot of water in order to get a really dark gray or a black um, on your on your brush. And um, I, these wooden doors uh, going in that kind of dark wood and that's like there's there's wood in the kind of almost adobe or stucco a clay building and so that's also the wooden um, look there too as well sorry <laughs> oh it's been a long week guys <laughs> and I apologize I'm uh, if you are doing this series with me in the year that I'm recording it and not later on um, We've had a lot of family things going on, and um, I'm recording these videos way late uh, uh, for you. So I've already posted week three, and um, I'm just now getting the voiceovers done for weeks one and two, uh, as well as three. <laughs> and so I apologize for the delay in the videos. Um, I thank you guys for all of your prayers and support as we navigate this holiday season. Um, my nephew uh, has been battling leukemia for over three years, and he passed away. And so um, it's just a harder season than, than most of them are. <laughs> and um, we're having a, at times where we are perfectly fine and times where it really hits us. So um, I appreciate all of your prayers and uh, especially for my sweet sister-in-law and brother-in-law, um, his parents and his two sisters, uh, for my kids who, you know, felt more like siblings to them than cousins, um, cause they've been raised really closely. Uh, I appreciate you continuing to pray for all of us as we, um, uh, navigate this new new normal um that is life we are thankful that he had a very real and alive faith in jesus that he is in heaven and we will get to see him again but at the same time we're sad that it's gonna be a while before we do so um i, I just wanted to express my thanks so many of you have reached out over email or facebook instagram messaging me um and letting me know that you uh are praying for me and for our family and I really do appreciate it. We are definitely feeling the effects of those prayers as God holds us up uh, through this time of uh, difficulty and grief. So we uh, we really appreciate you. Um, and I appreciate your patience as I've been uh, late getting blog posts up and uh, videos up and everything like that done for this Advent series. So really do appreciate it. Um, uh, that paint kind of pooled strangely and when it pools, I don't mind it most of the time it pools, uh, and I like it, but sometimes it just pools very, very strangely. And so you can take 
a brush that has hardly any water or is dry and as you are drying it with the heat tool you even move that paint around and adjust how it looks and it will um, kind of make that a little bit easier and as always I'm adding a uh, hashtag advent carols week two and at devo in action that's my handle on Instagram and on Facebook love for you to follow me and add your pics and your thoughts about a little town of Bethlehem um, as I'm looking at this I'm thinking that title just really doesn't stand out so I'm going to take a thicker black marker and just darken all of those down strokes and I have two of those and the first one I picked up was the one that is running out of ink so got to get the newer one that has ink in it here uh, to those down strokes and this really makes it pop quite a bit more I think it's much easier to read that title with just these down strokes uh, darkened or, and thickened those lines really kind of standing out on the page it makes it uh, pop quite a bit more so there we go uh, that's just personal preference you could leave it thin you could uh, write it in all caps you can do it however you want it's your page when you make it but I wanted it, the title to look like that thanks so much for watching come and join me in week three next <laughs>